Hey guys, I'm Mickey. I'm the president of sales here at Green Mango, um, if you don't know me. But we're going to do this every single week, a new tech. We're going to have a lot of tips. I'm really excited about this. But today, we've got Matt Barker, our uh, termite manager. He's been killing it. It's going to be a great podcast today. I've worked with Matt for how long has it been? Uh, six years. Yeah, we, uh, we did door to door. So I used to do insurance. And then I remember you approached me and you're like, hey, man, you should do this door to door thing. I'm like, that's for children. We don't do door to door. You're like, well, you could make a lot of money and then <laughs> take eight months off. And I was like, what? I could take eight months off and not work? I'm in. So we worked together. We've cried together, laughed together, fought, yeah. done it all. But you started at Green Mango, was it in July, right? Yep. July 12th was my first day. We're in November, and you've sold just shy of $400,000 in revenue. Yeah. Pretty Insane. crazy. <laughs> yeah. My best uh, best summer in door-to-door -door was um, about three fifty, and so it's crazy to do that much revenue and have Saturdays off. <laughs> right? And yeah. Some days you're done around 5. You sent me a video last night. It was dark, and he's got a flashlight walking around the house pretty funny yeah but, uh, dude i'm excited to have you on i think this will be super helpful this podcast just to help people realize what they can do better in sales and the th what i love about sales is you always have to improve and you'll go through ups and downs and in those ruts that's really when you have to dig deep and figure out internally like what you're doing wrong you have to self-reflect but what do you do when you're in those ruts in those slumps to get out of them? Yeah, that's a good question. I, uh, I do lean back on, you know, like times that I've gone through that are hard in life. Obviously, like it's funny. We were just talking about earlier cold plunge, but like, I feel like, uh, when you, to be good at sales, it's when you get punched in the face, how do you respond? I think there's, you know, two type of people that you get punched in the face and tuck tail or run, or do you punch back? And so just, I lean back on things that I've done that are hard in life. And, you know, just because someone yells at you or you lose a sale or you have a hard week, it's not, it's not as bad as what, what most people or other, you know, what I've been through before in my life or what a lot of people go through. And so yeah. it's just putting it behind you, moving one step forward, staying positive, staying excited. And then, just to, yeah, just it motivate. It's motivating for me. Like when you get punched in the face, it's fun to punch back. It's like when I have a hard sales day or a hard sale and I don't get the sale, then I want to try even harder that next, that yeah. next door. You're like the most competitive person I've ever met. We are competitive over board games. Like we'll fight over a card game. <laughs> That's true. And, <laughs> but like you want to win almost to a fault in everything. Yeah. Is that just in your nature? Or like, why is that? Yeah, I think ever since, I don't know. I've been super competitive. Yeah, I I don't know. Ever since I was a little kid, I was, if my parents wanted to get me to do something, they said, I bet you couldn't do it in 10 seconds. And then I did it. <laughs> so they knew how to manipulate me from a young age. Good but it was, I just, yeah, I'm very, very competitive. But you're just as competitive or more competitive. So that has resulted in. Well, screaming matches or you that's know why whatever. i think the most successful people in sales are just really competitive and they look at it as a game and just winning not about like oh i need to make commission i need to make this money like i've really never thought about sales and like calculated the money obviously you do at one point but it's more of like i just want to win yeah that's it and if i can get a bunch of sales and i can win i feel good about that yeah, it's actually some advice I tell people is like, if you want to be amazing at sales, don't look at this as like a job, look at it as like a sport. Because when you look at this like a sport, then it's like you're rooting for your teammates to do well. You then are like a sport, you're doing everything to get better at it. You make it more fun. And, and, and those are the people that do the best competitive and make it, a, make it fun. I love it. Well, we've got a lot of texts right now that are trying to get into sales and the biggest thing I've been trying to push them to do is just start. 
Like once you start, then you can start to figure out like ready, fire, aim. Don't wait to aim, just fire, and then you can figure out your aim later. But what advice would you have for a tech that's just trying to get their feet wet? Maybe they try a couple and they get rejected and that is like, you know, they're like, oh, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. What do you say to that? Like, do you embrace failure? What would you say to a tech that just wants to get going? Yeah. Embrace failure. Just know it's part of it. So it's really easy to get down when someone turns you down or you don't get that sale, but just embrace it. Know it's part of it and not let it get to you. Um, and then just keep trying it. It's the, it's the numbers thing with sales. You have to do it over and over and over again. Like you said, I've been doing it for eight years. I'm still learning things about sales. So it's just never stopping and don't get down. I tell people sales is like a roller coaster. You have ups and you have downs. Don't ride the highs too high or the lows too low. Stay consistent and and you'll have success. It's just a matter of trying it and being confident and, and you will have success. Totally. I think a lot of salesmen, they'll get super, super high, but what goes up must come down. Yeah. And they'll get low. They'll go to a 10, they'll go to a one. And in sales, you have to be at a five or a six. Always just be even act like you've been there. If you get too excited, like it just comes down hard and it crashes. Yep. Um, but being even kill is, is huge. Yeah. And also just staying hungry. Like, uh, I remember one of my first sales experiences. I thought I had an amazing day. I sold four and my manager, I got in the car. I was waiting for them to be like, holy cow, you did amazing. And they were both like, yeah, nice day. But that was it. And I was like, what? Okay. So I have to go sell way more. And then it was just good to set that standard of like, oh no, like there's always more, like don't get too satisfied with the success. Don't get too high with the highs. Like stay hungry, stay motivated, stay even keel. And, uh, yeah, I I love it. Yeah. When you're with a customer and you're trying to build value and you're trying to get them to that close, I think a lot of salesmen will get to the close in the pitch way too fast and they don't build up that value. What do you do to build value and help the customer understand why they need the product? Yeah. I think a big, uh, of them feeling the value is them seeing that you believe the value. And so it's a lot of eye contact. You, they have to believe that you believe that that, that value is there. And so being confident, talking like the boss, not looking off into the distance, not looking down, not being unsure of yourself, and then really believe the product. Like we have an amazing product here at Green Mango. It's not hard to be sold on that. And so for people to see that and then they'll see it in you, um, but it's talking with certainty, looking them in the eyes, making them feel comfortable, and then the, the, yeah. the value is there. if you're not confident, Why would they ever buy that? Um, You talk all the time in your trainings about uptones and downtones. Explain that a little bit. Yeah. Well, so. And why that is like that portrays confidence 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uptones and downtones is how like you. Yeah. Because if you're uptoning, you sound unsure of yourself. It's we uptone naturally when we do a question like, hey, do you want to go to the gym? Yeah, that's a question. But like, it's also like. If you, you know, yeah, you know, I think this is the the best, you know, but that's not sure of yourself or like uptoning. You just sound like, but versus downtone, I can't even do uptones. I can't even give an example. Um, but when well, you like, do, it's like saying like, Hey, what do you think of this? Would this be, does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. Like it just doesn't sound sure and confident. Yeah. Like when I, you know, show, show like stole a, money out a of downtone for that. Yeah, I just thought of an example of the uptone, though, you know, lying about if I, you know, stole some money out of my mom's drawer. I'd be like, yeah, I did not steal the money, you know. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, downtone would be more something like, yeah, my name's Matt. I know that, you know, Green Mango is, is going to give you the best service possible. Um, but it's ending your, your sentence with a downtone so that they know that what you're saying is a fact. So like, Mary, what you're going to love about this service is this. Yep. And like, 
hey, you you might like this service. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's such a small thing, but makes the world of difference. Yeah. You'll get people that, yeah, my name is Mickey and, uh, you know, I'm here with Green Mango, uh, the pest control and, uh, you know, just here to check out the place and <laughs> we're going to sell some rat service versus, Hey, I'm Mickey. I managed, uh, Green Mango. I'm here to inspect your property. Make sure we get the rats taken care of for you. It's a big difference. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, a lot of techs and salesmen get really good at um, maybe even building the value and then they're stuck. And there's that awkward way of, of closing. Um, it's scary to close, especially when you haven't. What do you do to close and be effective with that? Yeah, um, just do it. <laughs> 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 just do it it might feel weird and uncomfortable but the more weird and uncomfortable it feels that's going to be portrayed to the the customer well, lex is shaking her head and laughing because <laughs> it's funny but like the we did this ice bath this morning i've done a hundred ice baths and this morning at 5 a.m i did not want to do the ice bath and i was like i'm not doing it matt and you're like you're getting in I'm like i don't want to i don't want to do it and a lot of people ask, how do you do the ice bath every day? It's like, I just do it. Like, I, I don't know, but like a lot with success, being healthy. Um, everyone wants that quick fix and you just do it. And you can't think of, about it too much. You can't make it complicated. Make it simple and just go. Yeah. Right. And you'll be shocked. Like when you just do the clothes and you just do it, people will say yes. I, I It reminded me of a funny story. I, this guy, he was very you know, I was working with him, didn't have a ton of confidence. I'm like, just close, just close and close and close. And the first time he, you know, that next day he's like, Matt, I did it. And he said, yes. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that happens. Yeah, but he, he also, you probably remember this cause it was in our office, but he, he closed him. And then right after he said, are you sure? <laughs> cause he was so used to like, he was so shocked that closing worked. Right which is a horrible thing to say like yeah i'll get the sale and then he said are you yeah. sure so um, like give an example of a close like let's say i'm selling a rodent station termites um you build up all the value how would you close yeah and the key again building value and then going right into a close and so like with a rodent station you know yeah mary this these bait boxes it's going to be the best solution for you especially right now before it gets cold these rats are going to be moving in now i have a technician in the area tomorrow um would tomorrow morning or afternoon work better for you awesome yeah so simple so simple but a lot of salesmen they'll say yeah what you're going to love about this the rodents it's going to prevent them from getting in the house and then they stop and it's a pause that pause is you got to have some closes ready because yeah. like does that sound fair? Does that sound good? How's that sound? You want yeah. to get that scheduled? And there's a lot of soft closes like, yeah, does that sound fair? Let's get you on schedule. Mm -hmm. Another thing that really scares salesmen is an objection. So I used to be terrified. Like there's a big buff guy. Like I wasn't trying to overcome an objection. I was such a sissy. I loved grandmas because they were so nice to me. Uh, yeah. They would never be mean to me. They would never say, hey, Mickey, you're an idiot. <laughs> And my ego was always protected. And um, it's scary to overcome objections. But if you do it with confidence and you do it often, it's just like playing a sport. The more you do it, the better you get. Um, but how do you overcome objections? What do you do to overcome? Let's say, hey, man, I got to think about it. Yeah, of course. I'd expect you to. Uh, but the reason why Lexi decided to give me a shot is because she loves the service. Guys, did you done. see how fast that was? <laughs> that wasn't even like a a pause. You didn't have to think about it. He's done it so many times. You should be prepared. You should practice. How many times do we role play? Like we'll be a hanging lot. out on a Saturday. Yeah. We'll be watching a football game. We'll just start role playing a sales yeah. <laughs> scenario. Yeah. Right? We, all the time. My wife hates it, but <laughs> We do. And I'll sell her and she'll hear sales talk. But yeah, we practice a million times. And like you said, people get really uncomfortable with objections, but you just got to get comfortable with it. And that just takes role yeah. play. So well, one thing that's 
that's crazy is when you started doing door to door sales, you sold 250 accounts. Mm -hmm. You were okay. And you realized that you needed to get a lot better because there were other people doing five, 600 um, accounts a year. Mm -hmm. And instead of you just saying, that's just what I'm capable of, which so many people do, you said, okay, I'm going to refine my sales pitch, overcoming objections, body language, and you practiced over and over and you still do. Yeah. Um, that is what makes a great salesman is the practice. Yeah. And then being able to look inward and be like, how do I get better at this? Yeah. Even at your level where you could sell anyone, you still practice, right? Yeah. yeah. 100%. And it, practice is so important. Role play and everything. Um, but I do think 80% of it is mindset. So like Mickey talked about why we, me too, it's like a drug basically is the cold plunge is it, it strengthens your mind. And so doing anything where it's like working out consistently or doing something hard, but sales is all mindset and confidence. And so people feel that like people can feel your, how confident you are, what your mindset is. And then sales happens. And now obviously you need to practice the words, but like with objections, if you're confident already because you have a strong mindset and you overcome hard things in your everyday life or you just are disciplined, a little objection is not going to phase you. And so you're just confident, you respond, and then those customers want to talk to confident people as well that are sure of themselves. And so it's, I truly believe sales is 80% mindset. So do things to strengthen your mind. Mm, love that. Um, well, I think this has been awesome, Matt. Yeah. Um, is there any last advice you have for um, a technician or a salesman to be successful? Or like, what would you say is like the biggest key to success? And obviously, I think it's mindset. I totally agree. There's a lot of people that um, struggle with that. I've struggled with that a lot. But the uh, better you can get with your mindset, the stronger it will be with everything. Yeah. everything it, it it trickles over into your personal life but if you can get good at sales and become delusional with your belief you can do anything i believe that but oh, what nice. what advice do you have yeah i would just say be yourself it's really um especially when you're listening to other people is like you know i want to be just like mickey or i want to be just like matt obviously like we're going to teach you words but like be yourself because people will know and and feel that now be your most confident self and the most boss like self you can be but let your natural voice come out let you know laugh with people talk with people talk like you're when you're talking to a customer pretend like you've already known them for five years and you're talking to a friend um like be relaxed and be yourself but then be the boss at the same time yeah. We've had salespeople come into our house, right? And they just talk about their pitch the whole time. They don't even ask a single thing about my life. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I just feel like you just want what you like, what you need. You're not giving me anything. Like, ask me a little bit about my life, right? Yeah. Doesn't seem genuine. Just seems like he's just there to make the sale. People feel that, right? Yeah. People feel it's something Andy Elliott that is stuck with me, but people remember more of how you made them feel than what you say. And so make them feel good, smile at them. Um, I always try to compliment somebody. Like if someone has a beard, I definitely say, man, I have beard envy right now that <laughs> your beard looks good. If you get them to laugh, make them feel comfortable. Uh, and you make people feel comfortable by also being confident, but then talking with them, not talking at them. So making sure it's a conversation, but controlling that conversation. Obviously, we're going to get the sale and you're the boss, but make them feel comfortable. Love it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for you to do $3 million this next year. You just, you're just you going to pass $2 million today in revenue for the termite department. Yeah. It's big incredible day. what you're doing. So keep it up. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, bro.